What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. Today, I'm gonna to take you through how I built these floating shelves for my bathroom with hidden storage. Let's go ahead and get started. So I purchased three 1x6s from my local home center. They're the premium board, so they're about 22 bucks a piece, but the wood is light years better than the regular non-prime stuff you get. I started off by using my table saw and miter gauge to cross cut my pieces down to size. You can also use a miter saw with a stop block or a regular circular saw with a speed square for this step. After sorting the pieces, I was back at the table saw to cut the vertical side pieces that would help form the square of each shelf and everything is gonna be held together with glue and brad nails. Once the shelf was tacked in place, I measured out a separate scrap piece of plywood I had lying around to fit the interior width of my shelf. I took that piece over to the miter saw and cut it to a final length, and I crept up on this measurement to get it perfectly right. Next, I took it over to the table saw and I ripped it to its final width, about an inch and a half. Then I could add glue to three sides of the piece and tack it in place, again using brad nails to the top rear interior of the shelf. And then just repeat that same process for all three of my shelves. Now I wanted to reinforce all of the brad nails with dowels. This part of the project is totally unnecessary and you can just as easily use wood screws, but I felt like doing something a bit fancier. I started off by cutting my 3 8 inch dowel into small increments, and then used a scrap piece of wood with a Forstner bit to test and make sure that the hole that I was going to be drilling properly fit the dowel. Once I confirmed that, I added a piece of tape to my drill bit to mark a depth that I should drill to. And even though I don't think that this step was totally necessary, I do think that the reinforcement of the dowel as well as the aesthetic really just upped the quality of the piece. After adding glue and hammering in each dowel, I took it to my disc sander to flatten things down. You could also just use a regular belt sander or an orbital sander or a flush trim saw if you have one of those lying around. And after roughly getting the pieces down to size, I switched to my orbital sander and 120 grit paper to refine the piece as well as sand down all the sides to a nice smooth and consistent finish. And having a big work surface to clamp things down really makes a big difference in getting things done cleanly and efficiently and safely. But let's take a moment to talk about this video sponsor, Arrow Fastener. Arrow makes a wide variety of fastening tools, including staple guns, nailers, glue guns, riveters, and more. And I use the Arrow PT18G pneumatic brad nailer for this entire build, as well as their one inch brad nails. And I have a bunch of projects featuring Arrow tools in the works, including some exclusive projects going up on the Arrow site. So stay tuned. If you'd like to learn more about the Arrow tools and fasteners, check out the link in the video description. And thank you to Arrow again for sponsoring this video. The last piece of this was to add in the cabinet hardware that would attach the face to the shelf. And I used these snap hardwares that extended from 90 to 180 degrees. Now they aren't soft closed, so if you are worried about little kids snapping their fingers in these shelves, you'll want to invest in different hardware. I placed the hardware inside the shelf with the face of the shelf on the bottom and then used my phone to measure out spacing evenly. Once I had marked out where both pieces of hardware should go, I used a small drill bit to pre-drill my holes and then screwed in the hardware to the face. And I find just using a screwdriver with this small cabinet hardware is easier than using a drill sometimes. Once that was attached, I could put the shelf back on the face and then mark exactly where the hardware would attach to the actual shelf. This was a bit trickier to attach because I couldn't get my drill in to pre-drill any holes, but with a little force from a screwdriver, I could get the screw started and then use this $10 drill attachment that allows you to drill at any angle to finish things up. And you could see how by attaching the faces to these shelves, they suddenly have hidden storage. Last up was hanging. I placed the first shelf where I wanted to go, center of my wall in this case, right above the outlet, and then marked the location of the first hole to drill. I then used my drill to pre-drill a hole and then move the drill bit over 16 inches to drill the second hole. If you're in the US, your stud should be 16 inches on center, so it should take the guesswork out of finding your second stud. Then I could drive in the first screw and I'm just using two and a half inch wood screws to go through the shelf and the drywall into the stud. And then checking to make sure things are square before driving in the second one. And I cut a few spacers back in the shop the exact same length to then easily space out and repeat the hanging process with the next two shelves. And with the last screw in, the shelves were done. And for a one weekend project and with just a few tools, you can end up with something really great looking and a bunch of extra storage in your bathroom. 
So that is gonna wrap it up for this video. Now, these shelves are something that we have been wanting to add to our house since we moved into it. Not only are they really cool aesthetically, but they are super functional because for this bathroom specifically, we're really limited on storage. If you have any questions about this build, feel free to leave me a comment and I'd be happy to answer your questions. If this is your first time to the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe as well as that little bell. That way you never miss a project that we put out. So I think that's gonna do it for this video. One more huge thank you to Arrow for sponsoring this video. And until next time, happy making.